Okay, guys, we are the bald eagles of the tech world. We are strong. We are powerful. And what we're going to do is we're going to swoop down, grab that email right out of the user's hands like a little salmon, bring it back to our nest, which is our database, and feed our baby chicks. And when we do this, we are going to be using the user manager. Now, thankfully for us, the user manager is going to pretty much take care of everything. So we don't really even have to do much because the user manager is going to provide us with this thing called create async. Create async is a insane method. It's going to, you literally just pass in the user, you pass in the password, it's going to hash and salt it for you. And then it's going to put it in your database. And whenever you look at the quote unquote password, it's going to look like this. And the reason is it looks like that is because it's been hashed and installed. Now hashing is kind of complicated, but in a nutshell, this is the reason that we need to hash things. You hash things because if somebody breaks into your database, you don't want them to be able to see the words in clear text and you want to make it a little difficult for them to be able to get the passwords. Now, if somebody breaks into your database, th there is a possibility that they have access to some type of supercomputer and they could maybe, you know, decipher all the passwords, but most of the time it's going to be very difficult for them. But the way that hashing it works and the reason that people use it is because it is a one-way function. If you pass in password into a hashing function, it is always going to equal this number. If you pass in password again, it is going to equal this number. But if say if you passed in password just with a one at the end, it is going to be an entirely new hash it will look entirely different and that is the reason that we have hashes because think about it if somebody breaks into the database there's no way that they could possibly even be able to begin to see what passwords are because everything is so different and it goes for the same thing and if i pass you know password in again just like this it's going to be the exact same number as it was before let's go ahead let's hop inside vs code and let's get coding Okay, so we are inside of VS Code, and first thing that we're going to do is go within our controller, fi controller file, and we're going to create an account controller because we don't want to be putting uh, register and login inside of any other controller. We need to create a separate one. And as always, we're going to go into here, uh, import our controller base, go ahead, bring it in. It's looking good. And we also need to assign the URL. So we'll say route... Um, go ahead in here and we'll put a string with API and account. You could leave this blank and it will automatically assign everything for you, but I like to make sure everything's lowercase because I think it looks better. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add the API controller. <clears throat> We're gonna be bringing in the user manager. Remember, we need the user manager. And I think for right, for right now, we can just get away with just having the user manager. We're gonna have to add some stuff later, but uh, like I said, user manager takes care of a lot. So go into here and say user manager. Go up here. We're going to add it as a private property. We'll say read only user manager. And we'll say app user. And underscore user manager. Okay. Then we're going to go down here, and this is where we're going to assign it to the pr uh, private read-only property. So it's going to go down through the constructor, go up into this right here, and it's going to assign it. And it looks like that because we haven't actually used it yet. So here's where we're going to actually create the endpoint. So it's going to be a post because we're going to be submitting JSON data, and it's a creation because you're registering the user. So we're going to go register and that should do it but we still it's not it that's not everything i I, should, I guess i speaking a little bit too soon we still have to code a lot more it's not totally it you know what i mean okay action results and we're going to go register and we're going to say from body and this is where we're going to pass our register dto now we haven't created the register dto and we need to have a DTO here because you need to provide really strict validation because when people submit their emails, they're going to try to do whatever they can not to submit a real email, not submit emails. So you need to 
we need to create a DTO to provide a lot of validation. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create another folder here. I'm gonna call this account, and I'm gonna say register DTO. So we'll say register DTO. Okay, and the register DTO is gonna be uh, relatively simple. So we'll say prop, we're gonna pass in a string. It's gonna be optional, we'll have username. And even though we're going to make it optional, it's actually not going to be optional. We're going to make it required because you're gonna to have to require you, uh, people to input their username, of course. And then we're gonna go down here and we're going to, this is where we're gonna do the email. And .NET Core uh, provides you with an annotation that automatically does the email address for you or checks validation for the email address. So we'll go ahead and just use that. String optional, and we're gonna say email. Then we're gonna go down here and this is where we're going to input the password. So there's all different types of ways you could add validations for password. Right now, uh, we're just going to use the required, but just remember that you could add some type of regex and you can do all types of things to make sure that the password is required. But a lot of the validation is actually going to be handled by the create async and the user manager validation. So one last thing that we have to do is before you can actually create any users, you have to seed the roles. Um, whenever you try to create a user and you don't have a role associated with it, it's going to give you an error. And we told identity that we were going to use roles and we are going to be using roles. So before uh, we do, before we're actually able to even log anybody in, there has to be at least one role in there. And we're going to create a user role and an admin role. And it kind of just makes sense. There's going to be regular users and there's going to be admins who are going to have more privileges and will be able to access uh, different API endpoints that regular users cannot access. So we're gonna go into here, I'm gonna say on model creating, I'm gonna go ahead, pass in a builder and then go down here and this is where we're going to insult, insert the identity role so say I, a list of identity role and we'll just call this roles and say list identity role okay then we're going to go down here and we're going to new up a couple of identities so or identity roles i should say so we'll say identity role go back down here and this one will be our admin. So we'll have one admin role and we'll have um, one with a normalized name. And normalized name, all it means is that it's capitalized. So go down here and we'll just go ahead, copy and paste this down and change it to user. So we're gonna go to here. We're gonna have user, we'll say user. Then we need to add this. And also we need to add it. So we just created it, but we have to actually add it. And the way that we do that is just go down here. We're gonna say identity role. Um, then we're gonna say has data. And we're gonna go ahead and pass in the roles. Okay, so that is looking good. Looks like my linter is not picking that up. So I'll just move that over. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back. We're gonna bring in our register DTO. And here is where things are going to get interesting. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go within our register here and we're gonna wrap everything in a try catch because there are a lot of different server errors that can happen whenever you use the user manager and whenever you use create async because you have to think it is going to validate for the password complexity. It's gonna do all types of validation on its own. And if you don't have anything to catch it, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So that's the reason we're going to wrap it in and try catch. Also, we need to do a little bit of validation at the top that we already have within our DTO. So we're gonna go up here and we're just going to do our good old model state validation. And this is what's going to catch all the errors within, or what, that we declared within our DTO. Um, go down. First, we're gonna spin up an app user really quickly. And we're gonna say app user. And this could also be a great place to add other things if you want to as well too. If you want to uh, also maybe have them log in through maybe just the username, but we're going to do the username and 
the path and the email. So we're going to go register DTO. We're going to say uh, e uh, username. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to say email. Say email. And we're going to get everything through the register DTO. So go email looking good. And you could just do the you could just do the email if you want to. A lot of websites just have it to where you just you just do the e you just do the email. But we're going to do both, and we're going to go ahead and use our long-awaited user manager. This user manager that I keep talking about in this create async very powerful method that we have here. And of course, after we spin up, we just created our app user. We're going to pass in directly our password through the DTO that we're going to accept through the endpoint. So I'm gonna go password. Okay, that looks good. So we can go down here. So when the create async actually returns, it is going to return an object that's going to have properties on it that are going to allow you to check. And if that's confusing, uh, I'll show you what I mean here. So we're gonna say created user, I'm gonna call this created. I think that's more appropriate. So created user dot succeeded. So the the also the user manager is going to put properties on on it on the object that's going to tell us of whether it was successful or not. And we're going to use these properties to do all of our logic. So I'm going to go roll. Uh, we need to do our roll now. So I'm going to call this roll result, and we're going to go back into our user manager. We're going to add to roll async, and this is very similar to the create async, but it's for roles. And pass in the user we just created. And we're going to, anybody that signs in through the register endpoint, we are going to assign the user role. So we seeded our user role within our application DB. We've added our user and our admin. You probably don't want to be assigning admin roles straight out of the register endpoint. What you want to do is either add, add them manually or create another point that allows you to add users with admin roles. I would not allow people or allow some type of secret mechanism to assign admin roles through a public endpoint like that. I don't think that's probably a good idea, my opinion. Okay. And if it does work, we'll say user created. And once again, the role result or the add role to async is going to return an object that's going to tell us of whether it was successful or not. And if it's not successful, which there's highly, there's a good chance it might not be, what we're going to do is we're going to return an error. We'll return a status code. We'll say return status code of 500. And that is a, uh, just a server error. We'll say errors. You can put bad requests. I don't think bad. I'm going to do a status code 500, but you could also put bad requests there if you want to as well, too. Does probably not going to hurt much. Okay. So. Now, after if so, if the created user is not successful, we also need to handle that. And the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to go down here, and we're going to return a st another status code that says it was uh, something bad happened. This status code is going to be for the created user. So if the created user does not uh, successfully log in, we're also going to get an error. And a key point that. Like I said, whenever we return something from the create async or the user manager, it's going to come in the form of an object. So you're going to get all types of goodies. You're going to get errors. Uh, it's going to return errors for you. It's going to return whether it was successful or not. And it's another thing that is a part of the beauty of identity. It's going to do a lot of stuff for you. And just to catch anything else, I'm not aware of any other type of error. But like I said, these things are very complex. Uh, the, the identity, the user manager is very complex. So if we get any other exception, it's going to catch it and our, it's going to catch it and it's going to tell us through the try catch. So before we do anything else, we need to run the migration so that our admin and our user are seated. So we're going to have to do a migration. And what I'm going to do is just go to my keypad and I'm going to go up on the keyboard, go back up to .NET EF migrations. I'm going to call this seed role actually practiced this before so I, ha I have one already lined up i'm going to go .NET ef migrations add and we're going to go uh add seed roll call it whatever you want so you don't have to call it seed roll then i'm going to go up again and then i'm going to do .NET ef database update and everything went through so 
First thing is we need to check to make sure that it actually seeded the roles. So let's go within our roles right here. We, we have the user, we have the admin. If you don't have those, or if those are not in there, the register is not going to work. So please make sure you have those. And we're going to go within Swagger really quickly. Actually, let's do another cold restart. I, oh, wait a second. It's not even start. So I'm just going to go .NET watch run. So .NET watch run. Looks like we are good to go. Everything is loading up correctly. And I'm going to go into here and give this just some random username. So I'm going to call this investor444. I'll go investor444 gmail. So investor444 at gmail.com. I'm going to give it a supposedly secure password. I'm going to say password. I'm going to say 444. Looking good. And let's test it out, see if it works. User created. We are good to go. But let's not celebrate too early. Let's also go inside the database and make sure that it actually created it. So go to ASP.NET users, select the top 1,000 rows, and we have investor 444. That's the register. Next, we're moving on to tokens. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.